Hey guys, so I found this really cool articulating arm Raspberry Pi camera mount that I want to use for making time lapses of my 3D prints for this channel. I checked out the remixes and they got some really cool options, but I didn't find something that I wanted, which is basically a base. So let's uh, make one. Fortunately, the maker here sneaks has provided us with step files, which give us a, an awesome opportunity to remix this stuff using uh, FreeCAD. So thanks, Sneaks. I love your model if you're watching. And uh, hopefully this adds another remix to get you a little bit more uh, love out there from the 3D print community. So the first thing you need to do is create new and I want to import and I want to import the step file this will not work with STL files I'll show you other ways to do that later so right now let's go with this one here MF link step open it up and that's exactly what we want right there so the first thing you want to do is I want to cut this out here and basically put a circular base in. You'll probably have seen this in uh, preview images or in my intro. So I want to go to parts and in parts I can create a basic cube. First thing you want to do is click on this cube and edit. So let's make this cube a little bit bigger, say 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters by 30 by 30 millimeters now important thing to note is if you click on one of these boxes and you hit enter it will just confirm it for you I find that a little bit annoying instead of just taking a value it dumps you back in here so make sure you click off of it if you want to save a little bit of sanity so first thing I want to do is use my X, Y, and Z to move this to block off the area that I want to cut. So you can tell down here in a corner, you can see which way the arrows will tell you which way is which. So the arrow points towards your plus. So I want to move this up. So I'll just go Z minus. There you go. And that's good. Now the next one I want is I want to go X to move this over. So that'll be a positive. So I'm right right about there looks good for now now I just change my view so I can see this from an angle and now I want to go Y minus because the arrows pointing down and I want to go up so I'll go Y minus click 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 and yes I do really like my clicky clicky mouse it amuses me um, so I kind of like the way this looks here I want to maintain some of uh, some of the these are supports for uh, tie wraps I want to keep them just in case but at the same time I don't want too much of this angle right here so where I have it right you know you can tweak it a little bit more move it to where you want it but I'm really happy where it is right there right here right now so I'm gonna click OK and what you want to do is select your first your imported S, uh, step file then click on your cube and what you want to do is you want to make a cut of two shapes click that and boom check this out now the back part is gone so now I can add a base into it now I can add a base a couple ways I can just throw in a cylinder match it up and be happy with it but the way I like to do it is I like I always like to work with part design and of course the reason I like to do that is because I am an old uh, CAD guy and part design is the closest to uh, the CAD software 3d CAD software that I'm used to using such as SolidWorks so what you want to do is when you go to part design of course the first thing you want to do is create a new body so right here create a new body second let me turn this down sorry about that loud noises create 
create new body. Now that I have my new body created, for, uh, one thing I want to do is click on this face here. And I want to do here, create a shape binder, which will kind of, which essentially this shape belongs to a different model. It belongs to the cut model now. And I want to bring that to this body. So the way you do it is select it here, click here. And now I got the sh uh, shape based on that, off that face. So now I can edit on the shape binder. So now I will click on the shape binder and I want to go to create a sketch. You might notice a little time jump in my video. I just had a little bit of a power blip and, and unfortunately I live in a country so that's a part of my life. And so let's continue. When we left off I made a shape binder right here. Now one of the important things is one, one of the commands I want to use uh, will not be available if this model is shown. So the easiest way to hide it is to click on whatever you want to do, like cut, which is an old model, and click space. So that will essentially hide it. And that will actually give us access to the com one of the commands I need. So I want to make a sketch now, of course, on this body. So or on the shape binder itself. So click on the shape binder, make a sketch. And now I'm in my edit mode. So I want to use this as my reference, these two lines, but they belong to the shape binder. So I can click on this option here to create a link to external geometry. And now I can zoom in and click on here and click on here. So now I have these two lines. I can then use my create line sketch and of course see how it's blue that means it's a construction line if it's white like this it means it's an actual part of my drawing so again think of these construction lines as your reference you know like sometimes if you were drawing something out on a piece of paper you might want to draw it out light and just to get your references going and then you'll build your actual uh, model over that so what we're going to do is click on this guy here, go on a straight line, and I want my line to go from this point. And see how it snaps up to here, up to my latest point? Don't worry about that. I think that's just a bug in this version. And then click here, and then you'll see they'll both come in together. Then I want to click on here, and you'll see, see that little X that pops up? That tells me I'm it's this symbol right here. It means it's constrained. So I want to constrain it to this line or this dot, and I want to constrain it to this dot. And now I'm constrained. So now that I've done that, I know that this is my center point, but that center point is hard to access. So I just, this is a cheat I learned a couple versions ago working through the bugs. If I click on trim edge and I trim this guy and I trim this guy, well, I'll get a line here. And of course you'll see, you know, two degrees of freedom, like we talked about in our old video. So you can actually cheat through this. And all I'm going to do is I'll go fixed uh, vertically. So I'll, if you select this dot, this point, and then your center point, it'll automatically throw the existing value. So I'll just say, yep, yeah, okay, that's fine. And now I'm constrained to a one degree of freedom, which is my left and right. And I'll just can go to my fixed horizontally, click on this guy, again, click on this guy, it says, well, zero millimeters. Well, I'm fine with zero millimeters. Click OK. And now I'm fully constrained. So now that's my real center point. So now, because these are all reference geometries, I want to actually switch to my normal mode. And I want to draft a circle. And of course, I want to use this as my constraint because this is the middle of my model. Select it, go out, of course, one degree over here, you can see. And I'll just work in diameter because it's just easier for what I'm doing. I want to click it here and it's at 40 millimeters. Well, I kind of want it to be about two inches and every inch is 25.4 millimeters. 
And you know, since I'm lazy at math, let's just go put a star two and check it out. It does the math for me. Beautiful thing. Uh, one of the jokes I always have is this is why engineers don't know math because computers will do math for them. Uh, now I can close this up and this is what we have and I want to extrude it. So I want to give it a dimension. So let's go extrude and it wants it to be 10 millimeters. Well, 10 millimeters is a little bit too tall. And as I said before, there's a couple magic numbers I like to use since I have I usually print on 0.15 millimeter heights or 0.2 millimeter heights. If you do the math, then a common number for that is 0.6. So I like to work in increments of 0.6. So in this case, I'll go, I think I'll go for 1.2 millimeters. And this is what I end up with. It doesn't look that bad. Oh, I can, now I can turn on my cut here and check it out. So this is exactly what I wanted to build. But that 1.2 millimeters looks a little thin. So let's add another 0.6 to it. So edit there. And again, I can I can actually do the math. I can go plus 0.6 or I can just make it 1.8. Either way it will work. So that's cool. I like it out there. I'm happy. But you know what? I don't like the sharp edges. I kind of want things to look pretty. So let's select here and we'll give it a chamfer or a fillet. Make it a fillet. Uh, one millimeter is a little too big. See how it kind of goes crummy around here? That tells me usually that the geometry isn't that great for it. But uh, using my magic 0.6 millimeters again, go in, look at that. Makes it nice and fine. You know what? I'm happy with that, and that's pretty much all we have to do. So, again, let's export this. Now, here's the funny thing when you click on here, remember when you export, you have to choose a body. So, I want to use this one and this one. Well, I can just select both here, file, export, and let's just call it an STL, and we'll call it Cubase. You can already see I made one earlier just to practice. And do you want to replace it? Yep, I want to replace it. Let's run FreeCAD or Prusa Slicer. More, we have it here. And Cubase. Open. And there you go. Now you'll notice that this wants to, it's designed on its side. Well, that's how we, that's the orientation we designed it in. It's not really a big deal. We can fix it pretty quickly. Just say place on face and it says which is the bottom. So, you know, you can click here, there's the bottom. Like let's say you want to print it in this orientation, you can click there, but you know, that's, that's our base right there. And of course we are, that's, we are done. We're ready to print. So we can just go slice now. I'm going to slice this up and of course just send it to my printer. And once it's, uh, once it's up and going that start printing afterwards. Okay. Now my printer will start printing this out and I'll be back after it's done printing in an hour and a half to show you what the final, uh, product looks like. Okay guys, so here's the final print off the printer. And as you can tell, it turned out uh, pretty nice. I like it. And uh, here's the prints from the th uh, basically the base model that come with it. Printed that out, they look pretty nice too. So let's see how this looks together. I think it might look uh, pretty neat.
and oh that looks I, I really like the way this looks it uh it makes me think of the Pixar lamp what do, what do you guys think anyways that's it for me tonight I hope you guys uh learned something and I hope that trick will come in useful um uh, we'll do maybe another remix uh quick remix tomorrow and hopefully I'll get this guy going so we can do a nice time-lapse print on our next video. Have a good night. Cheers.